general for Honda, it's uh, almost a quarter of, uh, from all of our sales. So just from one model alone, we, we gain that much business for us. Uh, and it's also, uh, it's also a hit with the customers. Uh, not only in California where it's the number one selling vehicle, not only with uh, buyers under the age of 35, but with retail buyers alone. In the last 12 months, we are still the leader in terms of overall uh, sales. So Accords, again, a very important vehicle, not only to us Honda, but a lot of our customers uh, seem to think it's a big deal as well. Getting started with where we were with the 16 model refresh, uh, our grand concept really was to uh, continue setting a benchmark in the midsize segment. And uh, we wanted to do that by kind of focusing on three, uh, three main areas. Uh, the idea of fun, uh, by bringing some updated styling and some more dynamic uh, performance to the vehicle. Uh, we also wanted to uh, do it with the idea of having, having it be advanced, uh, so by bringing new safety technology and new features to the vehicle. And we also wanted to not uh, neglect the idea of environment by bringing uh, good, uh, improved fuel economy to the, to the lineup as well. So again, trying to harmonize all these things together to make sure that we are continuing our, our direction of being the, be the benchmark vehicle in the midsize segment. From a dynamic standpoint, we didn't want to leave uh, well enough alone. So we, uh, we basically looked at three main areas. Again, sophisticatedness, uh, or I don't even know, is that a word, sophisticatedness? No, not at all. Sophisticated, <laughs> you know, dynamism, <laughs> but we want to make sure the vehicle is sophisticated by bringing, again, more a more luxury level uh, um, uh, NVH, uh, noise vibration harshness, uh, and comfortable ability to the to the driving environment. Uh, we also want to make sure that it drove and was uh, more uh, stable, so we can keep kind of keeping a good linear feel to the vehicle. And at the same time, being a mid-sized car, sometimes people can feel that it's just you know too large. We wanted to keep making sure that it was agile, so that people can feel that they can use this on a on a, in a basis and they can do anything with and keep it uh, maneuverable. So why don't we get into some of the details in terms of what, what, we, what we did to the vehicle. Uh, from a powertrain standpoint, we're carrying over our already uh, uh, great uh, set of engines with the 3.5 liter V6 and the 2.4 liter uh, direct injected four cylinder. Uh, these vehicle, these engines uh, are allowing us to uh, use uh, improvements that were made in 2015 where we uh, increased some uh, flow in the engine and also modified the uh, ratios for the, for the CVT. Uh, and then also now in conjunction with our low running resistance uh, and uh, aerodynamic improvements, we've been able to see an improvement in the fuel economy to 37 highway for the four cylinder models. And again, that's through an improvement of 2.5% uh, in, our, in our coefficient of drag. And that's putting us at the top of the class there in terms of fuel, fuel efficiency and power. Uh, in the mid-size segment, so you can see where we now position ourselves against some of our competitors. Again, building off of the uh, already successful CVT that we debuted on the 13 model uh, Accord, we've continued with the refinement, so we wanted to make sure that the acceleration was more uh, direct, so we were able to get more immediate acceleration feel, again, right from, right from the start off, and then we've also looked at areas to improve its efficiency uh, to make sure that it's working and giving us the best output it can. From the, uh, from the body and chassis area, uh, we didn't, again, leave anything well enough alone. We, uh, we looked at everything from suspension to steering to brakes uh, to even the rigidity of the body. And for instance, uh, we've even added a, a new aluminum hood to the sedan model, so it's helping us with some uh, weight, weight management and weight reduction, uh, which is something I probably should look at. but. Uh, uh, I don't think I can put an aluminum hood on, so. Um, but uh, we, again, also wanted to make sure that dynamic performance was, uh, was throughout the lineup. So we wanted to make sure that each vehicle was able to maintain the appropriate uh, driving response for their customer base. So as you can see, we've improved the positioning of, of our three key areas uh, in terms of each model from LX through Touring, and each one giving their own unique flavor in terms of its, how it's tuned in for their uh, uh, respective clients. So the aerodynamics, uh, like I said, not only did we focus on all these areas, but we, we went through and looked at every individual little detail. So there's, we've actually added a new uh, uh, inner fenders air slit to help reduce the turbulence. We looked at the, the bearing hubs and we were able to reduce the friction by 
42 percent. Uh, we've added refined uh, chin spoiler and rear bumper cover designs to help with airflow. Uh, we've even added an underfloor cover again to keep with the, with the flow. Uh, so again, that might have the two percent, two and a half percent improvement in the uh, coefficient of drag is realized through this detail work. Uh, the new, uh, again, the new, the new vehicle here with uh, Sport and Touring, we wanted to have kind of a more uh, dynamic driving experience. We wanted to affect with that, and we were able to uh, get better confident braking on those vehicles with a larger uh, uh, disc diameter now, again, helping with the overall confidence in the braking. The body rigidity, uh, again, along with those aerodynamics and, uh, and all the details that we're looking at, we were able to... Uh, look at the areas where the vehicle is mounted and provide uh, better, uh, more improved torsional rigidity, especially, again, in the rear damper, where you can see that we were actually able to improve the rigidity by over 15%. And speaking of the, uh, the rear so we, uh, and the, the damper, we were actually able to uh, look, at, look at the damper itself and provide uh, some uh, refinement to it. Uh, with a new end cap and a new piston, we're actually able to uh, reduce the pressure loss. So again, it helps improve the, uh, the, uh, the the responsiveness of the damper and keeps it uh, with a flatter ride throughout the uh, throughout the ex driving experience. And then for touring, uh, we've actually gone through and added a new uh, amplitude reactive damper and uh, hydro bushings. Uh, these are again are helping with creating a more uh, luxurious and smooth ride for the touring grade. Again, matching the needs of the customer uh, in terms of who's looking at the top level of Fords. And then also, by changing the control logic and the steering, we achieved uh, more stability in both the uh, slow and fast steering controls. Uh, basically, with combining these with the suspension improvements, we're actually seeing a more linear steering feel and, and a, a, an achievement that uh, is going to be great in all driving situations. And I think, as uh, Robin mentioned, we've got a great route for you today, uh, kind of giving you a simulation of all kinds of different, uh, different situations you may uh, approach. So, between speed and, uh, and turning, so it's going to be a great opportunity to get an experience the new uh, the new Accord. From an exterior standpoint, uh, you were able to see some of this last night. Uh, our our concept was really for the sedan was to be exhilarating and exciting and, and moving uh, from the uh, 13 model to be this more premium premium style vehicle. So you can see uh, one of the main areas that we focused on was the the front grille and the headlights, so we've got a, a number of uh, areas there that would kind of bring a new face to the Accord. Also on the sedan, we didn't leave, uh, we didn't want to leave it alone. Uh, again, we wanted to make sure we were in moving forward with its more dynamic and sporty uh, image, and I think you can see that by moving forward with the same type of improvements through lighting and the fascias, we're able to really uh, improve and bring forward the look of the coupe. So speaking about some of those details, we've upgraded the exterior lighting. The, uh, we now have the LED DRLs on uh, sport and above models, uh, as well as a new uh, projector headlamp on all models uh, that are so quick. Uh, every vehicle gets a new LED tail light, uh, again, brings a new look to the rear. And uh, on the touring model, we, we previously had LED headlights, but now we have a brand new design, which gives it, a, a, it's basically kind of a very unique a look and as well as having a full LED turn signal, DRL, and uh, indicator light. So as mentioned, you can see the, uh, the difference in terms of the fronts for the, between the two models. We didn't we didn't carry over the same uh, same styling from once from sedan to coupe. Uh, both the uh, the coupe the coupe gets a dark chrome front grille with a more aggressive uh, front fascia design, whereas the uh, sedan uh, gets a, uh, a bright chrome grille along with a, a more uh, sculpted uh, lower balance be able to, uh, uh, again, give it some dynamic uh, look and presence. On the wheel side, we also didn't leave uh, anything untouched. We have all, an all-new array of we uh, alloy wheels for the vehicle. Uh, uh, 16 and 17 inch brand new alloys for the LX and EX, EXL models for the sedan. And on coupe, we're getting a new 17 and 18 inch alloy for the LXS and EX, EXL models. But for the first time, as mentioned yesterday, we're now applying a new 19-inch wheel to the touring grades. Uh, and I think you can see in here, we're also introducing a new touring grade for the, for the coupe model. So this is, a, this is the first time we're applying a 19-inch wheel to any Honda car, uh, and we're uh, excited to be able to debut that on the cord.
We've also had some uh, refinements to the color palette. We have uh, the new uh, new cone of coffee, which was out there last night in the sedan. Uh, we're also going to be bringing in a new uh, red, which is the San Marino red that used to be available only on the coupe. We're going to bring that in as a, as a special sport-only color, so that's going to be great for the sport buyer. And then we're also debuting a new uh, deep opal, uh, deep blue opal metallic on the uh, coupe. The uh, interior, we have a, a more advanced, again, and sporty concept. We want to make sure that we're keeping the uh, attitude of the vehicle uh, uh, intriguing and, and uh, emotional. Uh, we uh, We've, we've gone through and looked at every area here. You can see highlighted in the uh, in the colors or, or areas that we've updated uh, on many of the models. So even uh, one of the biggest things that we've heard for customer feedback is the 60-40 split folding rear seat. Uh, customers have asked us uh, for the flexibility to provide both cargo and, and passenger carrying capability in the rear. And for uh, for 16 model and sport and above models, the 60-40 split folding rear seat will be standard. Again, leave, showing you guys that no details left unturned, we've actually even updated the meters to a new font, which provides better uh, visibility. And on vehicles uh, like our uh, sport uh, sedan, we've actually now included a new red needle to give it kind of that extra sport feel. So one of the things we pride ourselves on at Honda is we talk to the customer and we hear feedback from them. And, and one of the biggest one of the biggest little areas we heard from them was uh, in the center console of the current Accord. Uh, they felt that it was being taken up by too much space. There, used to, there was a USB port there. Uh, it, was, it was eating up too much space for them to carry a cell phone or keys or other, other things that they want to have in that front center console. So we actually went through and were able to revise that shape, uh, providing a full, a full length open tray on the bottom now. And we moved the connectivity for the USB up under the, uh, the, the uh, the, the uh, console door. Uh, so this provides the customer with the ability to plug in and hide their uh, hide their phone or iPod or any connected device un underneath the uh, underneath the door, or to be able to have more space underneath in front of the uh, in front of the shifter. Uh, also, by increasing that space, we've actually even been able to now we're now going to offer a wireless charger uh, charging accessory, uh, so the customer will be able to uh, add some additional capability to that area. Uh, with, uh, the, with the 13 model cord when we introduced that vehicle, we introduced a brand new sport trim to, that, uh, to the lineup. And that sport trim has been very successful for us. It brought new uh, younger buyers to the, to the Accord, and, uh, and they're, they're a buyer set that really likes the unique uh, image and also uh, styling elements of their vehicle. So we wanted to continue to enhance that and give them uh, special and unique items. And you can see here, We've done that by adding a, a, a number of different things. For instance, uh, we have new aluminum sport pedals that are now standard on the sport. We have a unique carbon fiber looking panel, uh, decoration panel on the vehicle. And we've even offered a new combination uh, cloth and leather sport seat. So that will be unique only to the sport trims. But again, keeping with the idea that each, each trim is, is its own entity and its own type of buyer, we have a palette that's different for each model. So we can see here that uh, we have a different set of uh, interior trimmings for both uh, from LX all the way up through Touring. And we keep that theme together going uh, as well for the coupe. Uh, again, providing a, a, an individualized experience for each of the trim levels.